What's good, Panther Nation? Welcome back to Two Fans in the Stands. I'm CJ. And I'm Tony. And today we're going to take a look at the Panthers offense again, but this time we're going to take a look at the offense and some free agents that we would like to see Carolina sign this offseason. So, Tony, how you doing today? Man, shoot. I'm excited. I can't I can't mm. lie. It, the, the more and more that we talk about this offense and the potential that it has, and you know, I, I started thinking about the coaching staff that you know that we have now. Mm. You know, I, I get a little excited. I get more and more okay. excited that I think about, you know, like I said, about the potential of this offense. And I can't wait the free agency starts and I can't mm. wait for the draft to happen so we can get all the eggs in one basket and then sort them out. Yep. How about I'm you? How you feeling today? I, I agree with you hundred percent. I, I I agree. I am I'm I am ready uh more so than any time I have ever been a Panther fan. And I think it has <laughs> a lot to do since we started this podcast because you know now I'm I'm itching to get on here and you you know and and and, and run and tell that like you know the Panthers do something. I'm I'm running right. to my computer like, all right, let's get on here, let's record, you know. And I, I'm I'm waiting, <laughs> just just waiting for them to do something, you know. And, and but I that's just you. me being being impatient and being on this podcast has amplified my level of impatience um, to the to to the moon. So, yeah. Hey, but but you know the good thing about us having our own podcast is that we can do just that. We yeah. can go in here any given time and talk about our team. So yeah, you know, look like like a is. like like I like to say we we don't claim to be experts on anything, but we're gonna talk about everything. So yeah, we're gonna talk about <laughs> everything already. All right, well let's get into the slide here, and right. this is the same slide that we started with last week on um. I'm sorry, on our last episode about the Panthers' offense, and this is still the the current roster as it stands. Okay, right. We 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 feel that Brady, not Brady Christensen, Bradley Bozeman, okay, and Deontay Foreman are going to be re-signed. Right, I, I think everybody right. is is about ninety eight and a half percent that that's going to happen. Okay, um, our biggest need on offense. That me and you agree, glaring right. need tight end. Okay, right. We've right. got to get a pass catching tight end who is a threat. Who defenses feel like, hey, we have to make sure that we cover this person. Not saying yeah. that defenses let Ian Thomas run free down the field, you know, right. the, the entire game, and just like, nah, nah, they ain't throwing to him. But he's not a, not a focal point, or not even a kind of like a sub point to our offense, you know, D D DJ Moore and the run game, you know, neck and neck. And then it's just like Ian Thomas is forgotten about because he really doesn't do much. I mean, he, he, he's a true blocking tight end. Yeah. Period. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, yeah. he's a true in line attached to the offensive line blocking tight end that can occasionally. Yeah. And I, I emphasize occasionally <laughs> get out and possibly I'm emphasizing mm -hmm. possibly and possibly catch the ball. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. like, like you said, he, he doesn't offer, he, he, he doesn't, he doesn't cause a defensive coordinator to have to game plan anything specifically for him because yes. they don't see him as a threat. You put a tight end that threatens the middle of the field mm -hmm. underneath, that's something that a defensive coordinator is going to have to game plan for. So yeah. un until we get that, until we get that, everything is always going to be looked at and geared towards the outside as far as mm -hmm. our receivers, DJ yeah. Moore, Terrace Marshall. Yeah. And speaking of uh of Terrace Marshall, I must apologize because in our last video about the offense, I forgot to mention him at all. I, I, I look back right. at that video and <laughs> I forgot to mention him at all. So I'm gonna take just yeah. a second here to mention that um he started off his career kind of you know uh with some nagging injuries. Um he got yes. healthy this year 
I really think that he is going to be a legitimate number two wide receiver um, behind DJ Moore. I think he's going yes. to contribute this year. And um, now we do have a couple of uh, wide receivers on our wish list for, you know, this free agent episode. But I don't I wouldn't say that that Terrace Marshall's um, his, his spot is anyway in, in jeopardy because we, we saw this past year with I would say the the limited opportunities that he got. He, he made plays. And when I say limited opportunities, he was on the field, you know, and more so right. towards the end of the season. Well, like I said, it was it was that power running game. You, you know, it was right. power running game is DJ Moore. You know, but when Marshall's number was called upon, he made catches and he made some some damn good catches uh, towards the yeah. end of the season too. So yes, he did. I I I think he would go into this. I think he would go into this year as being a solid number two option alongside mm -hmm. DJ Moore. But now they need to solid solidify that. I, I would say two B or mm -hmm. number three wide receiver slot. Yeah. Shy Smith is, is just too inconsistent and he got durability issues. Yes, um, agree. We do have LaVisca Chanel, like we talked about before. You know, I, I would love to see how Frank Wright incorporates him into the offense. Mm -hmm. But you can never have enough weapons because one thing LaVisca never. Chanel is not going to do is not going to threaten the linebackers or the deep safety. So you – you know, you probably probably want somebody with some speed at mm -hmm. that slot receiver position that can take the top off the defense. And I, I got I got somebody in mind. Okay. All right. Well, this is our slide that we have up here. And let's go ahead and take a look at uh the free agents that are on our wish list. Okay. All right. All right, go go ahead with it, Tony. So my first free agent on my wish list that I'm in that I'm interested in is Mike Gusecki. Mike Gusecki is a 6'6", 250-pound tight end from Penn State. Uh, people normally associate him as a pass-catching tight end. I think person that he has a little bit of that ruggedness to him that he can uh, mix it up as well as far as get, get, getting you some blocks, you know, doing some blocking for you, but his primary thing is pass catching. Like I say, he's six mm -hmm. six, so he has a, a large, huge. Let me let me say huge instead of large. He has a huge <laughs> catch radius, right? Pretty athletic, you know what I'm saying, and got pretty good hands. And he will be either going to be a free agent this year, or Miami is going to release him. I can't remember. I did know, but now I don't remember. But yeah, mm -hmm. he's number one on my wish list. Um, my other, if that doesn't fall through, my second tight end will be Austin Hooper. Just like Robert Woods is looking to get out of Tennessee, so is Austin Hooper. He's 6'4, 254 pound tight end out of Stanford. And I just remembered he started his career off in Indianapolis with Frank Wright. Because mm -hmm. he was drafted out of Stanford by the Colts. So that might be a reunion that we see in Carolina with them bringing in Austin Hooper. Another pass okay. catching tight end. He's he's the type of tight end. He could do more of he can do more of both. You know what I'm saying? He can yeah. pass block and he can catch. Um was, was he um was he with Atlanta for a few seasons? Or am I thinking about uh somebody else? I think he was with I think he was with Atlanta before he went to Tennessee. Okay. Don't quote me on right. that. Uh let, let me go back and research on that. But if I'm not mistaken, yeah. I think he spent one one or two years in Atlanta before mm -hmm. going to Tennessee and it didn't work out. It's not working out for him in Tennessee. Yeah. All right. No, 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 no. I just in, in my mind, I, I I thought I remember us playing against him in Atlanta. I I'm I'm probably wrong. So <laughs> he, he pro probably did. Probably did, but I, I, I like I said, I, I remember him coming out of Stanford because he was at Stanford when Pep mm -hmm. Hamilton was the offense coordinator, and gotcha. he got drafted by Indianapolis, and he was there when Frank Wright was the head coach. So, okay. 
that I'm, that that possible reunion, you know, mm-hmm. that that's relationships matters. You know, we we, okay. we all we always hear that in the NFL throughout the leagues and stuff. Relationships matter, so you know that that's definitely a possibility. Either one of those two is definitely head and shoulders above what we currently have at tight end position. All right. Yeah. So I number agree. three, number three, I have on the list is a slot receiver that I mentioned earlier that can take mm-hmm. the top off a defense. And that's Paris Campbell, a uh, receiver from Indianapolis, six feet, 210 pound receiver at Ohio state. And if anybody knows anything about Paris Campbell, one thing you can't question is his speed. He ran a exactly. 431, 43140 at the combine. So mm-hmm. he's that slot receiver that has the size and speed to 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 basically take advantage of any uh slot res- you know slot corner uh mm-hmm. linebacker or safety that that could possibly uh be guarding him in the slot so that he he's a slot mismatch, mismatch is what I'm trying to say and he okay. can definitely take take the speed off Take take the top off with his speed, kind of probably would put you in the mind that Ted Ginn Jr. You know that we had back in the days, you know, in the Cam Newton. Era. Yeah. So okay, you know, I, I I would love to see uh, him flourish. And again, he's someone that was drafted and played for Frank Wright. He knows that system, and that would be a smooth transition for him coming mm-hmm. to Carolina this year. Okay. So th- th- those are my three guys that. I have as a uh, offensive targets. What about okay. you? Okay. Now I added uh Dalton Schultz, Hayden Hurst, and Robert Woods to this list. So Dalton Schultz, 6'5, 244, 244 pound tight end out of Stanford, played uh okay. drafted by Dallas. Um he wouldn't be any different than say Ian Thomas as far as the run game. I would say Ian Thomas would probably be a better blocker than Dalton Schultz. But, right. okay, but Dalton Schultz would definitely be an upgrade as a pass catching tight end. Okay. Yes, he we, would. We, we, we've all seen it on display in Dallas in his, his time there. And um, he's, he's also helped me win a, quite a few fantasy games as well. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, you know, you, you see it out. He, he has great hands. He has good route running skills, and yes, that's that's yes, what we're does. looking for. He is definitely somebody that the defense can't say, "Oh, I, we you know." Well, not not to say that the defense doesn't plan for everybody, but current situation that we're in now, you know, he he's he warrants a little more thought, a little more preparation than anybody in our a little more attention, right now. a little right. a little more attention. Um, right. And I'll double down with the same thing with uh, with Hayden Hurst. Okay, now I, I believe that um, the other three tight ends that we have on this list are probably better options than Hayden Hurst. But I added him on here as somebody who's potentially cap friendly. You know, he had an okay season in uh, Cincinnati this past year, but still good pass catching tight end and somebody yeah. that you'd have to account for. Okay, nothing n- nothing spectacular, but. Right. It, it it would be a little more, you know, bang for your buck than we have now. Right. All right. So we got Robert Woods out of USC. Okay. Love Robert Woods. Hey, Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl champion with the Rams, play, played this last season, Tennessee. Uh, Johnny Hecker and Austin Corbett have already kind of campaigned for the uh Scott Fitterer, Frank Wright to go ahead and bring him in. And, you know, they were teammates out in L.A. If one thing you can say about Robert Woods, he is definitely that possession receiver that every team needs. Okay, right. It's third. It's third down and five. You can count on Robert Woods. If he's open, you give him the ball. He's going to catch it. You know, he's going to get the yardage or he can turn up the field and take a take a play and make it into an even bigger play. Right. Okay. So he he would he would definitely be an upgrade at that um let's say that that two a 
barring injuries to anybody else slash slot receiver position that you were alluding to earlier. Right. And and one, one other thing on Robert Woods, he's a mm. hell of a blocker. He's a yes. hell of a blocker. Yes. yes, yes, he is. So he 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 can definitely uh, provide you um, when, when you look into a down block mm. on, on a defensive end. Yeah, you, you know, if you're trying to run, you know, a wide zone or mm-hmm. anything of that nature, and you need a down block, he is more than capable, more than willing to stick his nose in there and, and uh, provide it. He's not as dirty. I'm, okay, let me, let me say not dirty. <laughs> he may not be as f- mean or physical mm-hmm. as Hans Ward yeah. was back in the days, mm-hmm. but he can get in there and do those type of things, you know, mm-hmm. if need be. You know, yeah. now, H- Hans Ward was just on a whole nother spectrum. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, I, but, I get uh, that. He, he can definitely get in there and uh, mix it up and, and uh, do the things that, that needs to be done. So, yeah, I, I love Robert Woods as well. Agree. Agree. Okay. And to everybody out there, we know there are more options available out there. This is not um, this is not a list of, you know, the only people that we can bring in. We know that we know there are other players out there. This is just kind of our condensed list of who right. we'd like to see. So we know that um, there's a chance that some of these players may show up in Carolina. There's also a chance that none of them show up in Carolina. And, you know, they go a whole different route because, like I said, we're, we're just two fans. We don't run the team. So, right. but this this but, this is just a list of who so, – some options that, that we like. And we also looked at it as well, too, as like – being cap friendly now we exactly you know we, we we didn't try to look at the best possible player in each position knowing mm-hmm. that it's going to cost an arm and a leg to get that player so exactly. we, we by us kind of knowing and understanding what kind of position we in cap wise mm-hmm. draft pick wise what we're trying to do as far as bringing in another quarterback whether it be a veteran or whether we trade up and get our franchise quarterback of the future Mm-hmm. These are moves that we feel like that can be made and can still keep us relatively healthy cap wise. So the, the, this, exactly. is, the, this is why we chose the players that we chose right now that you see before you on, on today's list. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Well, Tony, you got anything else you want to add before we get out of here? Man, no. Um Cause if I get started, I ain't gonna know how to stop. So no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good, <laughs> folks. Folks, that um, let me let me tell you that that's growth right there. That 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 is growth right there. That is growth. We come from a family of long winded long winded folks. Okay, you know my, my my cousin here's my cousin here's a little older than me, so you know he 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 falls in that that older generation. But I'm, I'm I'm proud of him. I, I I'm I'm real oh, proud of him. That's a growth yeah. moment right there. And Man, without further ado, Panther, stop the button. Hey, it, with, <laughs> without further ado, Panther Nation, we're gonna call it quits with this video. If you like our content, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on the post notifications so you know when um when we post our videos. Comment, give us your thoughts. Um, we'll respond to you, and we want your info, and we like to know what you're thinking. And as always, Panther oh. Nation. Oh, wait a minute. Before you say news. that, mm-hmm. and, and before you say that, we do have something coming up here shortly because we do we, we thank for for the subscribers that have mm-hmm. interacted with us in the comment section and things like that. You know, we always talk about or always mention mm-hmm. the idea of you know, let us know what you may want to, us to talk about or some information that that you want to know and we will bring it on the um you know on the show and uh there were one or two comments that was mentioned and um i'm not going to tell you what it was exactly just yet but Mm -hmm. we're going to do something um we're going to answer that call okay yeah we're going to answer that call all right carry on sir hey as always panther nation keep pounding